Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Dole, aka the Big D of Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. And this time around, I bring to you a review of Joker from Warner Brothers, directed by Todd Phillips, the man who gave us Road Trip, Old School, and Starsky and Hutch, as well as the Hangover Trilogy. Yeah, now this is a different turn for Mr. Phillips, because all those movies I mentioned were comedies. Even Sarsky and Hutch. Anyway, the film is based on the DC Comics character of the same name who made his first appearance in Batman Comics. Anyway, the, now, I actually like the way this story is set up in 1981. That was really cool. And it follows a, a guy named Arthur Fleck, a mentally ill fed stand-up comedian, that's Joaquin Phoenix, in a role that I think is probably the best I've seen of his since Walk the Line. Anyway, he soon turns to a life of crime and chaos in Gotham City. Also in the cast, Includes Robert De Niro as talk show host Murray Franklin, who, according to him, he said his role in this pays homage to his character in the 1983 film The King of Comedy, Rupert Pupkin, who is a comedian obsessed with a talk show host. Well, I do believe I've heard of the film, but I've never seen it though. Also in this is Zazie Beats as Arthur's love interest, Sophie Dummond, and Frances Conroy as Penny Fleck, Arthur's mother, who formerly worked for Thomas Wayne, the dad of Bruce of a young Bruce Wayne, long before Batman. But anyway, and for those of you who don't know who Miss Conroy is, you may know her best from HBO's award-winning drama from the early 2000s, Six Feet Under, and, well, you're in for a rude awakening. For those of you who don't remember, want to forget the Catwoman movie from 15 years ago, or probably just don't know, just don't want to know about, or why ever... She was in that, as a matter of fact. So this is the second time I'm seeing her in a DC Comics flick. Yeah, you better believe it, folks. I know a lot of people didn't like Catwoman with Halle Berry, but uh, that's another story. Thank you. Now, Arthur lives with his mother, Penny, and got them. Apparently, he Arthur's trying to make a living. He's well, being a clown, trying to job in there for a store closing, these kids take a sign, they beat him up with, and soon he's all, goes all warp mining and what have you. Yeah, he suffers from a neurological disorder that causes him to laugh at inappropriate times. Yeah, that was kind of a surprise and what have you. And he also meets Sophie, a girl who lives in his apartment, who happens to be a single mother, becomes his love interest. Soon, he becomes a real big performer as he performs at the children's hospital, but unfortunately, a gun he gets from someone is dropped, and he tells lies to everyone that it's a, well... Just for a prop. Now, I'm going to keep going with my review. I will I will give some details. Not a whole lot. But I will be giving a spoiler alert at the end, okay? So I will give you the warning in, in just a few minutes. So anyway, soon later on, Arthur is being down by these three guys who actually work... For Wayne Enterprises, but they were drunk though. So anyway, it 
unintentionally starts a protest movement against Gotham's rich with protesters eyeing clown masks in the unidentified killer's image. Soon Arthur gets to do a, do a stand-up routine, but it goes poorly, though. And apparently, he manages to find a letter that was written by his mother to Thomas Wayne. Well, he meets young Bruce, but gets into a real scuffle with their butler, Alfred. Soon after a visit from detectives, Penny suffers from a stroke and is hospitalized. Well, Arthur's getting so much delusion, what have you, and soon he gets a visit by a couple of his old co-workers, but eventually murders one of them in an, ooh, that's gotta hurt bit. Yeah, you're gonna have to see the movie on how that goes and everything. And later on, not only that, I will tell you something else. Not only that, Arthur kills his own mother. Yes. And he's continuing to have more delusions. And soon he gets a call to be on... Well, Miss, Mr. Murray Franklin's talk show. Now, now some of the sets kind of remind me of the old Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Well, days from long ago. Kind of does. Now, I'm going to get to the ending. Now, this is going to be the ultimate... This is going to be a bigger spoiler. I'm giving you exactly five seconds to stop this video at once and go see the movie. When you're done watching that movie, you can watch the review again, and I'll continue. Here's your five-second warning. Okay, now the ending to Joker was really a shocker. I have to say, now when he comes to the show, when he talks to... Mr. Franklin and one of the, I believe, his stage manager, I think, and wants him to be announced as Joker. And I like the outfit that he wears. It almost kind of reminds me of the Joker outfit Cesar Romero wore on the, t the Batman TV series, as well as the Batman movie that came out after the success of the first season of the show. Anyway... He tries to get the audience to of talking about, joking about murders and what have you, not make everyone too thrilled, get everyone too thrilled, especially with M M Mr. Franklin's previous guest that was before him. So evidently, Joker's really just spilled the beans home that he was the one responsible for the murders. And they want him off, but no sooner said than done when Joker kills Mr. Franklin in a real bloodshot of a... And I do mean like bloodshot as a shot from the gun and blood splatter. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, I'm sure. Anyway, and soon after that, he's arrested and, and the cops drive him off and Joker's really... Ex or, Arthur, whoever you want to refer to him as, is watching all the chaos that's going on until an accident occurs. A car crash, the, car, the police car he was in gets crushed by an ambulance, crashed into by an ambulance, and then a taxi, and oh boy. Two guys wearing clown masks gets Joker around, and he survived, and worse... Mr. and Mrs. Wayne are murdered, leaving young Bruce behind. Yep. So anyway, Joker's feeling pretty darn heavy of what he has done. That's how that story goes. Anyway, that's it. Was Joker any good, and is it worth seeing? Hell yeah, this movie is 
two big thumbs up. And believe me, I've already given it a big five-star rating on Letterboxd, which you can find me on Letterboxd. Anyway, what did you think of Joker? Let me know what you thought about in the comments section. Like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you very much for watching this big review of a new movie. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.